I never thought that it would come to this. No, I didn't. Hey, we've had enough. Our way of life is threatened. And things these days are getting so out of hand because the governments are telling us what we can and what we can't do. Leave us. Leave us to choose our own rights. I'm worried that I might not be able to go shooting with my dad. Our livelihood, our way of life, employment, we're finished. It's as serious as that. This is what a disarmed country looks like. This is how little is left once free men and women surrendered their right to own a firearm. The silence was deafening, marching like a defeated people, thousands of shooters and sportsmen, grabbing at one last chance to resist, fighting for a freedom they had already lost. I'm not doing it for shooting, I'm doing it for freedom. I don't care if I never fire another shot. But I'm damned if I'm going to let my government make the decision for me. My father once said to me that the day you hand your guns in, that means that the country's no good to live in anymore. No one really thought that they would take your rabbit guns and your duck guns. That just couldn't happen. It was an impossibility. We thought no one would ever do anything to us. Um, we were wrong. Too bloody late now. Once the guns are gone, you're not going to get them back. Giving into government by giving up their firearms. Gun owners were shamed into silence while politicians and the anti-gun forces moved swiftly, turning two tragic shootings into legislative opportunities. It becomes quite clear that if you want a safer society with lower gun violence, then you've got to reduce your gun ownership. In Great Britain, a total ban on handguns. Within a year, storage rooms at police departments were filled with firearms. No matter how valuable or how rare, they were turned in by law-abiding citizens to be destroyed. The main thing that's been destroyed in the UK is democracy. We've had a vociferous minority hoodwink the media and the public into believing what they've done is right. We've basically accepted that our government possibly have a point to make. And I think that we should have told them very clearly that they do not. There's the old saying, if the good men stay silent, only the evil is heard. And the good men, we sat at home, all 60,000 of us, and we were silent. A very bad mistake. In Australia, it took just two weeks for an outright ban on all semi-automatic firearms and pump-action shotguns to become law. We're supposed to be in a democratic country here in Australia, but I'm starting to wonder about that now. How dare the government take away my gun? How dare they do that? Because I haven't done anything wrong. On May the 9th, I was allowed to own firearms. On May the 10th, I was a criminal if I didn't hand them in. And what did I do? Just because I happen to be a firearms owner, um, I'm, I happen to be some sort of potential murderer or, or some sort of monster. And uh, that's just not the case. It's the feeling of being a second-rate citizen. It's the feeling of being a Jew in Nazi Germany. That's the same feeling. Gun owners forced to surrender their firearms to the saw blade, the scrap heap, and the blast furnace. Distract the pen. And for collectors like Len Martin, all he has left is memories. Photographs of what freedom once felt like. A cult collection worth thousands of dollars, gone forever. My family fought for this country, for his rights, my rights, and they did it for nothing. Because what we've got now is, uh, I believe we're heading for a very, very, we're close to a dictatorship. But it's more than just losing a firearm. It's losing a tradition and a cherished right. And that's a loss that can never be reclaimed. That firearm was my father's. It was, it was mine. It's, it was going to be my son's. And they've taken it from me. And they shouldn't be allowed to do that. The chief of firearms in South Australia said to me, oh, you'd be happy with the money you got for your guns, wouldn't you? I looked at him, I said, you don't understand, do you? I don't want the money. I want my guns. I lost a... Uh, Ruger 44 carbine rifle, which I used for pig shooting, and I lost a Rimfire 22 uh, semi automatic, which is the first firearm my father ever gave me, uh, and that really hurt. A hurt that runs deep, 
Olympic shooters feel abandoned by their own government. Although they still compete beneath the flag of Great Britain, they've been forced to leave their homeland and practice in another country. We purportedly live in a free country. But I can't live in my own country and do my own sport, which is an Olympic sport. Um, I have to go to another country, somewhere else in the world, and do it. So it, it flies in the face of British justice. It's, um, I, th I think it's appalling. I'm horrified at my own country. But gunsmiths and gun shop owners haven't only been robbed of their sport and their rights. They've lost their livelihood altogether. One by one, they will have no choice but to close. It's a sad way to end a hundred years of tradition because one of you know, the true icons of the sporting goods industry has been ruined by a government's decision to, to just take away our firearms. They can just say, from tomorrow, you're only allowed to have one shotgun per person. Or if it suited them, no shotguns per person. And that's a hell of a loss, and we have lost that. Silence, which has led to submission, and even worse, division within the ranks. Now, gun owners in Australia and Great Britain will be the first to admit they only have themselves to blame. That's a very sad indictment, and our biggest enemy has been ourselves, and apathy. We did not stand up with pride at all. One of the biggest mistakes people can make is disunity. That will draw you down every time, and you can bet that the media and the politicians will try and exploit that lack of unity. And that's just what happened. Not only did gun owners submit to the political pressure and the non-stop media spin, they gave in to public pressure as well, turning in not just the guns that were banned, but all of their guns, and giving up on their rights altogether. We find a lot of people uh, that have been happy gun owners in the past are now giving up their licenses and uh, their sport and selling their firearms off. I've lost interest in the whole thing because of, you know, the, the extra costs in keeping the guns and just the, the new regulations that have come in as well. It's all becoming too difficult. There's a lot, of, a lot less young people shooting now because it's just so difficult. Um, a lot of older shooters are, are passing in the cars because, you know, they're, they're sick of being treated very poorly by the government. So, you know, I'm, I'm fairly worried that in a few years we won't be able to shoot at all. Sacrificing their rights for the politicians' false promise of a safer society. The thing that's really worrying is this gesture politics, the idea that you can ban one sort of gun or another and actually make the public safer. Of course, it's a nonsense. I understand that they are upset that they're losing their sport. I understand that. It is the price that has to be paid for living in a safer society. I don't think people believe that anyway, to be honest. Common sense dictates that no, they're not going to be any safer. The crime rate's not going to drop. The use of firearms by criminals uh, will still be there and they'll still obtain their firearms on the black market. And the black market is booming in Australia at the moment. I think the criminals are absolutely uh, rejoicing at the fact that all legal guns are taking over circulation. And if you don't believe it, just listen to what this street thug told us in London. There's a crock, it's making no difference whatsoever. I mean, the people in the street, they're going to get their guns anyway. No problem. Gun bans that won't make a difference, and gun owners struggling to stop the momentum against them. It's not a question of what next, we already know what's next. They're already screaming about more bans. It hasn't stopped. It could well be shotguns next, it could well be rifles next, it might be both. The end will be that they will probably ban all types of guns, all shotguns, which people enjoy. Uh, and then that'll be that. There'll be no sport of shooting whatsoever. Gun owners who set themselves up for defeat. Oh yes, I mean, we, we sat at home waiting for the truth to be told. The truth is never told. They not only lost their will to fight, but were willing to surrender what they know is rightfully theirs. It's a lesson learned the hard way, and their message to gun owners in America is simple. It will happen to you if you let it. You cannot sit back in your small hometown believing that the Browning A5 in the cupboard will be there forever. Once registration comes in and takes place, the police will know where it is and within 5, 10, 15 years or when it's politically correct, they will come and get it. Don't let the American legislators put the short end of the wedge in because once they find a way of doing it and once it's successful, then they will do it time and time again. Stay strong. Um, 
don't budge one inch. As soon as they start to suggest a ban on one sort of gun or one type of gun, say no. Do everything you can to oppose it, because it's just the beginning of a broader ban. For God's sake, get behind the biggest organisation, make it as big as you can. Join the NRA. Keep the pressure on, because if you don't keep the pressure on, there are people out there whose entire life is devoted to taking your rights away. Get off your butts and wake up. Read the writing on the wall. Join up and be with the strength now. It's too late when your guns are gone. You should never give up. Never, ever give up.